Dr. Baliga here. The case scenario or multiple choice question discussed in this podcast is derived from an outstanding chapter on patient safety in Baliga's textbook of internal medicine available at www.mastermedfacts.com. It's authored by Dr. Angela Tess, MD, who is Associate Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School. She's a hospitalist in the Division of General Medicine and Primary Care, Department of Medicine at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, Director of QI and Safety for GME at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. During her second year as a hospitalist, she served as a Rapkin Fellow in Medical Education. She served as an Associate Program Director for the Internal Medicine Training Program where she was in charge of quality and curriculum development. As a hospitalist, Dr. Tess currently teaches on medical wards and is Director of Education for the Hospitalist Program. Dr. Eric J. Alper, MD, is Professor of Medicine at UMass Medical School. He completed his medical training and internal medicine at UMass Medical School. In 1996, he became the first hospitalist at UMass Medical Center and helped to create the hospitalist program there. He was the internal medicine clerkship director from 1998 to 2007 and patient safety officer for UMass Memorial Medical Center from 2003 to 2006. A 64 year old woman is admitted for pneumonia. Clinically, the patient is improving. The night before the patient is scheduled to be discharged to a rehab facility, he has a seizure, a finger stick blood sugar is obtained and is found to be 18. His roommate is diabetic and was documented to receive insulin shortly prior to the seizure. After treatment with D50 and a night of observation in the ICU, the patient returns to his previous baseline. Because he was in ICU, his discharge to the rehab facility is cancelled and on return to the floor, another facility needs to be identified. Which of the following is the next best step? A. None is required as no harm has been done. B. Tell the family that the nurse administered insulin by mistake. C. Assure that his nurse is terminated for not following procedure. D. Contact risk and management and quality to conduct a root cause analysis. E. Require that all insulin administration be attended by two nurses. And the answer is D. Contact risk management or quality to conduct a root cause analysis. The patient most likely received his roommate's insulin and required a higher level of care as a result. This incident requires investigation and improvement to better understand how this happened and to prevent this from happening again in the future. The patient and his family deserve a disclosure of an error, but prior to this, a root cause analysis should be performed to carefully investigate all possible explanations and root causes. It is likely that systems are not in place to sufficiently prevent such medication errors it is not appropriate to simply discipline the nurse as this is unlikely to prevent such an event from occurring again. The case discussed in this podcast is derived from Baliga's textbook of internal medicine from an outstanding chapter on patient safety authored by Dr. Angela Tess, MD, Associate Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and she is a hospitalist in the Division of General Medicine and Primary Care Department of Medicine at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, BIDMC. She is also the Director of QI and Patient Safety for GME at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. During, during her second year as a hospitalist, she served as a Rapkin Fellow in Medical Education. During this fellowship, Dr. Tess created a model to teach quality improvement to residents. She served as an associate program director for the internal medicine training program 
where she was in charge of quality and curriculum development. Dr. Tess currently teaches on the medical wards and is a director of education for the hospitalist program. She has led faculty workshops in both curriculum development and patient safety education. She is currently co-director of SHM and AAIM's Quality and Safety Educators Academy. Dr. Eric J. Alper is MD FACP, SFHM, is a professor of medicine at UMass Medical School where he also did his medical training and his internal medicine residency. In 1996, he became the first hospitalist at UMass Medical Center and helped to create the hospitalist program there. He was the internal medicine clerkship director from 1998 to 2007 and the patient safety officer for UMass Memorial Medical Center from 2003 to 2006. He is now the vice president and the Chief Clinical Informatics Officer at UMass Memorial Healthcare. He has received multiple teaching awards and has been recognized for numerous quality and patient safety improvements.